Welcome to today's webinar, Professional Learning for Successful Implementation of the California English Language Development Standards. This is the third of five webinars regarding the California English Language Development Standards. This webinar will highlight chapter two, proficiency level descriptors for the California English Language Development Standards. We welcome teachers, administrators, instructional coaches, professional learning providers, and anyone who is new to the California English language, English language Development Standards or who would like to refresh their familiarity with the ELD standards. My name is Gustavo Gonzalez. I am an education programs consultant in the Language Policy and Leadership Office, or LPLO, in the Multilingual Support Division at the California Department of Education, or CDE. I will be presenting today today's webinar along with my co-presenter, Christine Snyder. Thank you, Gustavo. Um, so good afternoon, as Gustavo mentioned, my name is Christine Snyder and I am with the Region 15 Comprehensive Center at WestEd. The Region 15 Comprehensive Center is one of 19 federally funded regional comprehensive centers. The leadership and staff at the Comprehensive Center provide capacity building technical assistance to state educational agencies, and the Comprehensive Center collaborated with the CDE as thought partners on this project. It is a pleasure to be here today. So there will be opportunities to ask questions during today's session. We will answer as many questions as we can toward the end of today's webinar and submit your questions in the question and answer or Q&A feature. We'll also post frequently asked questions or FAQs on the CDE English Language Development or ELD standards webpage at a later date following today's webinar. And we will post in the chat the link to the ELD standards webpage. Another way is to email your questions to the Language Policy and Leadership Office email address at lplo at cde at dot ca dot gov. And we will post in the chat the LPLO email address. And in addition, we programmed opportunities to reflect on today's content and post a response to the reflection prompts in the Padlet. And we will post in the chat the link to the Padlet. And so now we will take a few moments to see who is in attendance for today's webinar. A poll will appear on your screen and please complete the poll by identifying what your role or position is at your local level. And if the poll does not appear um, or if the poll does not feature your role or position, just please select other. So the poll will show the following options. Who is in attendance? teacher, paraeducator, site administrator, or instructional coach, professional learning provider, district administrator, or school board member, county office of education administrator, teacher education faculty, community organi organization member, or other. And so let's close that poll in about five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's see those poll results. And joining us today are 56% teacher, paraeducator, site administrator, or instructional coach. Great, welcome. And 23% professional learning provider, district administrator, or school board member. And then almost a tie, 11% uh, other, and 10% county office of education administrator, teacher education faculty, community organization member. Wonderful, thank you and welcome to everyone. Great to see you here today. So before we jump into the content, we would like to find out more about your knowledge of the California English Language Development Standards or CA, California ELD Standards, proficiency level descriptors or PLDs. So a second poll will appear on your screen. Please complete the poll by identifying what knowledge you have had with the, or what knowledge you have with the PLDs. So please select the best answer that most resembles um, your present level of knowledge. And the poll will show the following options. How knowledgeable are you of the California ELD standards PLDs? I have extensive knowledge of the PLDs, 
I have some knowledge of the PLDs or I have little or no knowledge of the PLDs. So let's give you a chance to indicate and let's close it in about five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's close it and let's see the results. Oh, fantastic. Well, this is great. 70% of folks by most folks here, I have some knowledge of the PLDs. That's great. That's exactly why you're here. 22%, I have little or no knowledge of the PLDs. Perfect. You're in the right place. And 8% of us have an extensive knowledge of the PLDs. So everybody, welcome. Thank you so much. And we hope today's webinar will be extremely helpful to you, um, no matter your present level of familiarity, in becoming an expert on the California ELD standards. So we'll be using a Padlet today, and it houses resources for today's webinar, questions for engagement opportunities later in the presentation, and registration links for upcoming webinars in the series. And we'll post the link to the Padlet in the chat, or you can navigate it to it using the QR code on your screen. And um, our agenda items for today's webinar include, one, what are the PLDs? <laughs> Two, why it's important to be familiar with the PLDs. Three, organization of the PLDs. Four, PLDs in the proficiency levels. And five, closing. So the goals for today's webinar are for participants to be able to explain what the PLDs are, explain why it's important to be familiar with the PLDs, and to explain the relationship between the PLD levels. We posted in the chat a link to the CDE webpage where you can access the PDF version of the California ELD standards and just click on the ELD standards tab and then you will see the link there, and that will be in the chat. So in the next part, we will do a deep dive into the PLDs. So beginning on page 17, chapter two, which is titled Proficiency Level Descriptors for the California ELD Standards, the PLDs provide an overview of the stages of ELD through which English learner students are expected to progress as they gain increasing proficiency in English as a new language. So why is it important to be familiar with the PLDs? It's important for all teachers of EL students to be familiar not only with the ELD standards, but also with the PLDs, because PLDs depict the student knowledge, skills, and abilities across a continuum. And they identify what English learner or EL students know and can do at early stages and upon exit from each of the three proficiency levels. So that's emerging, expanding, and bridging levels. And it is important because the descriptors can be used as a guide to provide EL students with targeted instruction in ELD, as well as differentiated instruction in academic content areas. So it's very important to note that while the PLDs describe an aligned set of knowledge, skills, and abilities at each proficiency level that reflects a linear progression across the levels, this is done for purposes of presentation and understanding. Actual second language acquisition, this is so important, actual second language acquisition does not necessarily occur in a linear fashion within or across proficiency levels. An EL student at any given point along their trajectory of English learning may exhibit some abilities like speaking skills, for example, at a higher proficiency level while at the same time exhibiting other abilities at a lower proficiency level, like writing skills, for example. Additionally, a student may successfully perform a particular skill at a lower proficiency level, for example, reading and analyzing an informational text, and at the next higher proficiency level need review in the same reading and analysis skills while present, when presented with a new or more complex type of informational text. So that's very important. 
the organization of the PLDs represents ELD as a continuum of increasing proficiency in language learning and use, starting with native language comp competencies that students possess when they enter school and concluding, though not ending, with lifelong language learning that all language users engage in. So the three levels, emerging, expanding, and bridging, represent the stages of ELD, describing expectations for how well students can understand and use the English language at each level as they continue to build on existing language skills and knowledge. The PLDs emphasize that students, EL students at all proficiency levels are capable of high level thinking and can engage in complex, cognitively demanding social and academic activities requiring language, as long as they are provided appropriate linguistic support. And the extent of support needed varies depending on the familiarity and complexity of the task and topic, as well as on the student's English language proficiency level. So within the PLDs, general levels of support are identified as substantial, moderate, light, and occasional. And the descriptors for these general levels of support are intended to signal the extent of linguistic scaffolding most likely needed for appropriately implementing the California ELD standards at each proficiency level. The descriptors, however, are not intended to explain how to provide support or differentiate instruction for EL students at each level. So each PLD includes the following. Overall proficiency, which is a general descriptor of EL students' abilities at entry to, progress through, and exit from the level. Early stages, which are descriptors or abilities in the English language that EL students have at the early stages of the level, and exit stages, which are descriptors, descriptors of abilities in English language EL students have at exit from the level. And the descriptors for early and exit stages of each proficiency level are detailed across three modes of communication, collaborative, interpretive, and productive. So the collaborative mode of et communication uh, encompasses engagement in dialogue with others. The interpretive mode of communication relates to comprehension and analysis of written and spoken texts. And the productive mode of communication involves creation of oral presentations and written texts. Now, there are two dimensions of knowledge of language. They're described as metalinguistic awareness and accuracy of production. So metalinguistic awareness is the extent of language awareness and self-monitoring that students have at the level. And accuracy of production is the extent of accuracy in production EL students can be expected to exhibit at the level. So EL students increase in accuracy of linguistic production as they develop proficiency in English. So on page 20, you can view the white and blue PLD chart. A section of that chart is labeled student capacities. So the image on the slide shows th that section from the chart. So EL students come to school possessing a wide range of competencies in their native language appropriate to their age. They may have varying levels of literacy in their native language, depending on their prior experiences in the home, community, and school. And as learners of English as a new language, they gain metacognitive awareness of what language is and how it is used and they, and they apply this awareness in their language learning strategies, including drawing upon knowledge of their native language. So the three proficiency levels are emerging, expanding, and bridging. 
And the proficiency levels represent the stages of English language development, describing expectations for how well students can understand and use the English language at each level as they continue to build on existing language skills and knowledge. So at the emerging level, students progress very quickly, learning to use English for immediate needs as well as beginning to understand and use academic vocabulary for other features of academic language. The image on the slide shows the emerging level descriptors from the chart. At the expanding level, students are challenged to increase their English skills in more contexts and learn a greater variety of vocabulary and linguistic structures applying their growing language skills in more sophisticated ways that are appropriate to their age and grade level. And again, as EL students progress through the expanding level, they move from being able to refashion learned phrases and sentences in English to meet their immediate communication and learning needs toward being able to increasingly engage in using the English language in more complex cognitively demanding situations. So upon exit from the expanding level, students can use English to learn and communicate about a range of topics and academic content areas. And the image on the slide shows the expanding level descriptors from the chart. Now at the bridging level, EL students continue to learn and apply a range of high-level English language skills in a variety of contexts, including comprehension and production of highly technical tests. As English learners progress through the bridging level, they move from being able to communicate in ways that are appropriate to different tasks, purposes, in audience, and audiences in a variety of social and academic contexts toward being able to refine and enhance their English language competencies in a broader range of contexts. And upon exit from the bridging level, students can communicate effectively with various audiences on a wide range of familiar and new topics to meet academic demands in a variety of disciplines. And the image on the slide shows the bridging level descriptors from the chart. Now, lifelong language learning relates to students who have reached proficiency in the English language as determined by state and local criteria and continue to build increasing breadth, depth, and complexity in comprehending and communicating in English in a variety of contexts. The image on the slide shows the lifelong language learning section from the chart. So EL students possess cognitive abilities appropriate to their age and experience. In order to communicate about their thinking as they learn English, EL students may need varying linguistic support depending on the linguistic and cognitive demand of the task. So students at the early stages of the emerging level can engage in complex, cognitively demanding social and academic activities requiring language when provided substantial linguistic support. As they develop more familiarity and ease with understanding and using English, support may be moderate or light for familiar tasks or topics. The image on the screen shows the substantial support section from the chart. Students at the early stages of the expanding level can engage in complex, cognitively demanding social and academic activities requiring language when provided moderate linguistic support. And as they develop increasing ease with understanding and using English in a variety of contexts, support may be light for familiar tasks or topics. The image on the slide shows the moderate support section on the chart. And students at the early stages of the bridging level can engage in complex, cognitively demanding social and academic activities requiring language when provided light linguistic support. And as they develop increasing ease with understanding and using highly technical English, support may not be necessary for familiar tasks or topics using everyday English. And the image on the slide shows the light support section from the chat. Students who have exited 
the bridging level benefit from occasional linguistic support in their ongoing learning of English. And the image on the slide shows the occasional support section from the, chat, the chart. And now, Gustavo will discuss the PLDs by each proficiency level. Thank you, Christine. So we will now look at the ELD proficiency level continuum with more detail by reviewing each proficiency level in each mode of communication to see the tasks that EL students should be able to perform at the early stages of the level and when they exit the level. The image on the slide and on the next slide is taken from page 21 of the California ELD standards publication. This particular image shows the emerging level in the collaborative mode of communication. At the early stages of the emerging level, students are able to express basic personal and safety needs and ideas and respond to questions on social and academic topics with gestures and words or short phrases. They are also able to use basic social conversations to participate in conversations. Upon exit from the emerging level, students are able to express basic personal and safety needs and ideas and respond to questions on social and academic topics with phrases and short sentences. They are also able to participate in simple face-to-face -face conversation with peers and others. The image on the slide shows the expanding level in the collaborative mode of communication. At the early stages of the expanding level, students are able to express a variety of personal needs, ideas, and opinions, and respond to questions using short sentences. They are also able to initiate simple conventions on social and academic topics. Upon exit from the expanding level, students are able to express more complex feelings, needs, ideas, and opinions using extended oral and written production and respond to questions using extended discourse. They are also able to participate actively in collaborative conversations in all content areas with moderate to light support as appropriate. The image on the slide shows the bridging level in the collaborative mode of communication from page 22 of the California ELD Standards publication. At the early stages of the bridging level, students are able to express a variety of personal needs, ideas, and opinions, and respond to questions using short sentences. They are also able to initiate and sustain dialogue on a variety of grade level academic social topics. Upon exit from the bridging level, Students are able to participate fully in all collaborative conversations in all content areas at grade level with occasional support as necessary. They are also able to participate fully in both academic and non-academic settings requiring English. We are now going to pause and reflect on the PLDs from the collaborative mode of communication at the exit stage of the emerging level and the early stages of the expanding level. The task is to analyze the relationship of the PLD descriptors from one level to the next and to identify ELD instructional practices and supports needed to enhance EL students' English proficiency from one level to the next along the PLD continuum. We will post in the chat the pause and reflect instructions that I have just mentioned. Now we will move on to the next slide that contains the PLDs you will reflect on. This slide shows a collaborative mode of communication PLDs at the exit stage of the emerging level on the left side and the early stage of the expanding level on the right side. Upon exit from Emerge from the emerging level, EL students are able to express basic personal and safety needs and ideas and respond to questions on social and academic topics with phrases and short sentences. And 
to participate in simple face-to-face -face conversations with peers and others. At the early stages of the expanding level, EL students are able to express a variety of personal needs, ideas, and opinions, and respond to questions using short sentences, and also initiate simple conventions, or sorry, initiate simple conversations on social and academic topics. Reflect on these PLDs and analyze the relationship of the descriptors and identify ELD instructional practices and supports needed to enhance EL students' English proficiency from one level to the next. For example, after you read it, you might think, hmm, it might be important for a teacher to teach students and also to model how to express personal needs and safety needs. What does that language look like? And how do I teach it? So provide your responses on the discussion Padlet. You will have four minutes and we will pause the recording while you reflect. And we will resume the recording when we all return. So we're gonna have four minutes. Everyone return at four o'clock on the dot. So we return at four o'clock on the dot. Excellent. And make sure that you uh, place your reflection in the Padlet. Okay, let's go. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, I will share some of the responses from the Padlet. We have people say, uh, supporting my students and moving from highly scaffolded face-to-face -face dialogues about pretty familiar topics to uh, supporting my students to start conversations more independently with less scaffolding. Excellent. Also, um, by using intentional partner and grouping instructional practice, students can expand their knowledge as they gather ideas. Excellent. Teach students to express opinion, respond to basic questions. Excellent. Uh, use visual aids, sentence frames for conversations, uh, specific topics. Uh, interact with peers in a, in a meaningful way. Uh, students need vocabulary and time to practice speaking to peers. Um, also, uh, provide vocabulary around personal needs and basic safety needs. Share sentence stems, including questioning. Wonderful. Um, thank you for those uh, responses, and everybody else can check that out in the, the Padlet. And we're also going to post in the chat um, just some other possible responses and just some things to consider. So thank you everyone for your participation. We will now review each proficiency level in the interpretive mode of communication to see that EL, the task EL students should be able to perform at the early stage of the emerging level and when they exit the level. The image on the slide and the next slide is from page 21 of the California ELD Standards publication. At the early stage of the emerging level, EL students are able to comprehend frequently occurring words and basic, basic phrases and immediate physical surroundings. They are able to read very brief, great appropriate text with simple sentences and familiar vocabulary supported by graphics or pictures. They are also able to comprehend familiar words, phrases, and questions drawn from content areas. Upon exit from the emerging level, EL students are able to comprehend a sequence of information on familiar topics as presented through stories and face-to-face -face conversations. They are able to read brief, great appropriate text with simple sentences and mostly familiar vocabulary support supported by graphic, graphics or pictures. They are also able to demonstrate understanding of words and phrases from previously learned content material. The image on the slide shows the expanding level in the interpretive mode of communication. At the early stage of the expanding level, EEL students are able to comprehend information on familiar topics 
and on some unfamiliar topics in contextualized settings. They are able to read independently a variety of great appropriate texts with simple sentences and more complex texts supported by graphics or pictures. They are also able to comprehend basic concepts and content areas. Upon exit from the expanding level, EL students are able to comprehend detailed information with fewer contextual clues on unfamiliar topics. They're able to read increasing com increasingly complex grade level text while relying on context and prior knowledge to obtain meaning from print. They are also able to read technical text on familiar topics supported by pictures or graphics. The, interpre the image on the slide shows the bridging level in the interpretive mode of communication from page 22 of the California ELD Standards publication. At the early stage of the bridging level, EL students are able to comprehend concrete and many abstract topics and begin to recognize language subtleties in a variety of communication settings. They are able to read to increasingly complex text at grade level. They are also able to read technical, technical, supported by, technical text supported by pictures or graphics. And upon exit from the expanding level, Yale students are able to comprehend concrete and abstract topics and recognize language subtleties in a variety of communication settings. They are also able to read with limited comp comprehension difficulty a variety of grade level and technical texts in all content areas. We are now going to pause and reflect for the second time on the PLDs from the interpretive mode of communication that we just covered at the exit stage of the emerging level and the early stages of the expanding level. The task is to analyze the relationship of the descriptors from one level to the next and to identify ELD instructional practices and supports needed to enhance EL students' English proficiency from one level to the next along the PLD continuum. We will post into the chat the pause and reflect two instructions. Now we'll move on to the next slide that contains the PLDs you will reflect on. Consider the instructional practices and supports needed to enhance a student's proficiency from exiting the emerging level to early stages of the expanding level. Upon exit from the emerging level, students are able to comprehend a sequence of information on familiar topics as presented through stories and face-to-face -face conversations, and to read brief grade appropriate texts with simple sentences and mostly familiar vocabulary supported by graphics or pictures. At the early stages of the expanding level, EL students are able to comprehend information on familiar topics and on some unfamiliar topics in contextualized settings. Read independently a variety of great appropriate texts with simple sentences and read more complex texts supported by graphics or pictures. Reflect on the PLDs, analyze the relationship of these descriptors, and identify ELD instructional practices and supports needed to enhance EL students' English proficiency from one level to the next. Provide your responses on the Padlet. And again, we will have four minutes. So we, are, we will pause the recording while you reflect, and we will resume the recording when we all return. So everyone will come back at 4.11 p.m. Thank you. And we can pause the recording. Welcome back, everyone. I will share some of the responses from the Padlet. And thank you for, for your responses. We have 
um, in my science class to support my EEL students at the exit stage of the emerging level in the interpretive mode, I might provide a pictorial glossary for every concept in the textbook reading, for example, pictures for cell or magma, and then decrease the volume of text. I have them read. Uh, then over time, support their growth. Um, I would gradually increase the amount of text uh, that they read and decrease the number of extra pictures. Excellent. Uh, provide frequent exposure to maps, graphs, and charts to build comprehension, not only during LPAC practice, also teach sequencing language, use mentor text to model reading, build background knowledge, embed visuals and graphics, and order or uh, uh, graphic organizers, and model how to interpret and apply them to the reading. And then increase language production and peer interaction, build on their background knowledge to increase comprehension, increase parent involvement. Those are wonderful responses. Thank you so much. And there's more there, so please look at the Padlet. And then uh, we're also going to share some possible responses in the chat. And thank you for your participation. And on the next slide, we will now review each proficiency level in the productive mode of communication. So to, to see the tasks that EEL students should be able to perform at the early stages of the level and when they exit the level. The image of the slide shows the emerging level in the productive mode of communication, which is, which is from page 21 of the California ELD Standards publication. At the early stage of the emerging level, EEL students are able to produce learned words and phrases and use gestures to communicate basic information. They are able to express ideas using visuals such as drawings, charts, or graphic organizers. And they are able to write or use familiar words and phrases related to everyday and academic topics. Upon exit from the emerging level, EEL students are able to produce basic statements and ask questions in direct informational exchanges on familiar and routine subjects. They are able to express ideas using information and short responses within structured contexts. And EEL students are able to write or use learned vocabulary drawn from academic content areas. The image on this slide shows the expanding level in the productive mode of communication. At the early stage of the expanding level, EEL students are able to produce sustained informational exchanges with others on an expanded variety of topics. They're able to express ideas in highly structured and sca scaffolded academic interactions. EEL students are also able to write or use expanded vocabulary to provide information and extended responses to contextualized settings. Upon exit from the expanding level, EEL students are able to produce, initiate, and sustain spontaneous interactions on a variety of topics. They are also able to write and express ideas to meet social and academic needs through the recombination of learned vocabulary and structures with support. The image on the slide shows the bridging level in the productive mode of communication from page 22 of the California ELD Standards publication. At the early stage of the bridging level, EEL students are able to produce, initiate, and sustain interactions with and express ideas to meet increasing Lee, increasingly complex academic demands for, for specific purposes and audiences. Upon exit from the expanding level, EEL students are able to produce, initiate, and sustain extended interactions tailored to the specific purposes and audiences. They are also able to write, 
and express ideas to meet a variety of social needs and academic demands for specific purposes and audiences. We are going to pause and reflect again on the PLDs from the productive mode of communication at the exit stage of the emerging level and the early stages of the expanding level. The task is to analyze the relationship of the descriptors from one level to the next and to identify ELD instructional practices and supports needed to enhance students' English proficiency from one level to the next along the PLD continuum. So in the chat, we posted instructions to the pause and reflect number three. And now we will move on to the next slide that contains the PLDs you will reflect on. Consider the instructional practices and supports needed to enhance a student's proficiency from exiting the emerging level to early stages of the expanding level. Upon exit from the emerging level, students are able to produce basic statements and ask questions and direct informational exchanges on familiar and routine subjects and to express ideas using informational and short responses within structured contexts. At the early stages of the expanding level, EL students are able to produce sustained informational exchanges with others on an expanded variety of topics and express ideas in highly structured and scaffolded academic interactions. Reflect on the PLDs, analyze the relationship of the descriptors, and identify ELD instructional practices and supports needed to enhance the student's EL proficiency from one level to the next. Please provide your response on the Padlet. And we will have four minutes, so we will pause the recording while you reflect. We will resume the recording when we all return. Everyone, come back uh, at 4.22 p.m. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. So I will share some of the responses from the Padlet. We have, a students will need an increased vocabulary in the target language, along with familiarity with sentence structure to express sustained information. Yes, very important. The gradual removal of scaffolds, provide scaffolds such as sentence and paragraph frames to help students draft and deliver information. Start with highly structured scaffolds and then gradually remove some frames as students progress. Wonderful, yes, definitely. Opportunities for English learners to produce information, narrative and expository text are based on connected topics. So we need to provide opportunities for students to interact through Socratic seminar, book talks, and academic conversations. And then provide students, time for students to practice their responses. Definitely, students need to have a lot of practice time. Pro provide graphic organizers to guide their responses and presentations. Uh, use uh, discussion frames to help students express their responses orally and in writing. Also explicitly teach vocabulary, wonderful. And hopefully we can all, everybody goes into the Padlet to read the rest of those responses. Perfect. And we will also post in the chat some other possible responses. And uh, thank you everyone for your participation. Now, Christine will continue discussing the, discussing the PLDs by each proficiency level. Thank you, Gustavo. It's great to see all the engagement in the Padlet. It's exciting. Um, so we will now review each proficiency level in the metalinguistic awareness knowledge of language to see the tasks that EL students should be able to perform at the early stages of the level and when they exit the level. So remember that the metalinguistic awareness knowledge of language indicates the extent of language awareness and self-monitoring that students have at the level. And the image on the slide shows the emerging level in the metalinguistic awareness knowledge of language from page 23 of the California ELD standards publication. So at the early stages of the emerging level, EL students are able to apply to their learning of English an emerging awareness of 
differences and similarities between their native language and English, ways in which different king, um, kinds of language are appropriate for different tasks, purposes, and audiences, and how to intentionally and purposefully use a limited range of everyday vocabulary, phrases, and memorized statements and questions in English. Upon exit from the emerging level, EL students are able to apply to their learning of English an emerging awareness of differences and similarities between their na native language and English, ways in which different kinds of language are appropriate for different tasks, purposes, and audiences, and how to intentionally and purposefully use mostly every day and a limited range of general academic vocabulary and domain-specific vocabulary, phrases, and memorize statements and questions in English related mostly to familiar topics. So the image on this slide shows the expanding level in the metalinguistic awareness knowledge of language from page 23 of the California ELD Standards publication. So at the early stage of the expanding level, EL students are able to apply to their learning of English an expanding awareness of differences and similarities between their native language and English, ways in which language may be different based on task, purpose, and audience, how to intentionally and purposefully use mostly everyday vocabulary, and an expanding range of general academic and domain-specific vocabulary in English related mostly to familiar topics, how to extend discourse in limited ways in a range of conversations, and how to recognize language differences and engage in some self-monitoring. Upon exit from the expanding level, EL students are able to apply to their learning of English an awareness of differences and similarities between their native language and English, ways in which language may be different based on task, purpose, and audience, how to intentionally and purposefully use both everyday vocabulary and a range of general academic and domain-specific vocabulary in English related to familiar and new topics, how to extend discourse in a variety of ways in a range of conversations, and how to recognize language differences, engage in self-monitoring, and adjust oral and written language. And so the image on this slide shows the bridging level in the metalinguistic awareness knowledge of language from page 24 of the California ELD standards publication. So at the early stage of the bridging level, EL students are able to apply to their learning of English a sophisticated awareness of differences and similarities between their native language and English, ways in which language may be different based on task, purpose, and audience, how to intentionally and purposefully use a range of precise and varied grade level general academic and domain specific vocabulary in English related to new topics, how to extend grade level academic discourse in a variety of ways in a range of conversations and written texts of varying lengths and complexities, and how to recognize language differences, engage in some self-monitoring, and adjust oral and written language in a range of contexts. Now, upon exit from the bridging level, EL students are able to apply to their learning of English an awareness of differences and similarities between their native language and English, ways in which language may be different based on task, purpose, and audience, how to intentionally and purposefully use a range of precise and varied grade level general academic and domain specific vocabulary in English related to new topics across the discipline, how to extend grade level academic discourse in a variety of ways in a range of conversations and written texts of varying lengths and complexities across disciplines, and how to recognize language differences, engage in self-monitoring, and adjust oral and written language in a range of contexts across disciplines. So now we're going to pause and reflect on the PLDs from the metalinguistic awareness knowledge of language at the exit stage of the emerging level and the early stages of the expanding level. So the task is to analyze the relationship of the descriptors from one level to the next 
and to identify ELD instructional practices and supports needed to enhance EL students' knowledge of English from one level to the next along the PLD continuum. So really thinking about how do we push students from um, one proficiency level uh, descriptor to the next. And we'll post into the chat the pause and reflect instructions. And now we will move on to the next slide that contains the PLDs you will reflect on. So consider the instructional practices and supports needed to enhance a student's proficiency from the exiting the emerging level to the early stages of the expanding level. So upon exit from the emerging level, EL students are able to apply to their learning of English and awareness of differences and similarities between their native language and English, ways in which language may be different based on task, purpose, and audience, how to intentionally and purposefully use mostly everyday vocabulary and an expanding range of general academic and domain-specific vocabulary in English related mostly to familiar topics. At the, at the early stages of the expanding level, EL students are able to apply to their learning of English and expanding awareness of differences and similarities between their native language and English, ways in which language may be different based on task, purpose, and audience, and how to intentionally and purposefully use mostly everyday vocabulary and an expanding range of general academic and domain-specific vocabulary in English related mostly to familiar topics. So reflect on the PLDs, analyze the relationship of the descriptors, and identify ELD instructional practices and supports needed to enhance EL students' knowledge of English from one level to the next. And please provide your responses on the Padlet. And you'll have four minutes. We'll pause the recording while you reflect, and we'll resume the recording when we all return. So everyone, if you would please come back at three, uh, 4 35 p.m. Okay, thank you. I'm going to um, share some of what I'm seeing in the chat, and it's it's really it's really interesting. Let me um, let me just highlight some of the the great comments. So I think metalinguistic awareness it's it's really something to wrap our head around. And what I appreciate in this Padlet is the very explicit attention paid to this kind of thing. So I want to highlight this. Um, Discovering root words and cultural ling and linguistic differences and similarities. So not just differences and similarities between language, native language and English in terms of the morphemes, in terms of um, word study, root words, really metalinguistic thinking about the language, not just pointing out how it's different, but thinking about um, it's the differences. Metalinguistic awareness would involve teaching students about different registers and situations. So um, you might give a student an example of task, purpose, and audience, and how the choice of vocabulary and grammar would be appropriate in one situation, but not in another. And then crucially to say why, what's the difference? Thinking about our language, why would you choose that word in that context and not another? Um, here, here's someone, uh, practice giving students two different contexts for using everyday vocabulary. So for example, calling a friend, this is great, calling a friend to say hello versus calling the bank to report a missing debit card. Oh boy, that's that's really, I get that. And we would practice each dialogue sequence and note the different vocabulary used for each scenario, right? So we're, we're calling, we're making a phone call, but the language is so different. And then being aware of how the language is different um, and and just really, oh, I guess I'll move on, but take a look in the Padlet if you haven't had a chance to. Um, very powerful. So um, let me go ahead and share some um, some additional responses that, that you might use. So um, using cognates to show similarities between native language and English where applicable, demonstrate differences and similarities in language structure. For example, a sentence in English compared to a sentence in Spanish. Um, demonstrate using social vocabulary for a specific purpose or audience. 
demonstrate using academic vocabulary for a specific purpose and audience, teach domain-specific vocabulary, do demonstrate how to use domain-specific vocabulary for precision, um, teach everyday vocabulary and how to use it, teach academic vocabulary and how to intentionally use it in relation to a topic. And then here's some real concrete specific forms using graphic organizers, input charts, word walls, or other types of supports to support students in using different kinds of language. And um, everything that we just shared, we'll go ahead and, and add to the Padlet as well. And now, um, the, the leading up to the final pause and reflect, and thank you so much for your engagement, these Padlet, but take a look at the Padlet. It's full of such great ideas. Um, we'll now review each proficiency level in the accuracy of production knowledge of language to see the tasks that EL students should be able to perform at the early stages of the level and then when they exit the level. So remember that the accuracy of production knowledge of language indicates the extent of accuracy in production EL students can be expected to exhibit at the level. And the image on the slide shows the emerging level in the accuracy of production knowledge of language from page 23 of the California ELD standards publication. So at the early stage of the emerging level, EL students are able to be comprehensible when using memorized or copied words or phrases. They're also able to produce English, but they may exhibit frequent errors in pronunciation, grammar, and writing conventions that often impede meaning. But upon exit from the emerging level, EL students are able to be comprehensible when using simple or learned phrases and sentences. And they're also able to produce English, but may exhibit frequent errors in pronunciation, grammar, and writing conventions that sometimes impede meaning. So the image on this next slide um, shows the expanding level in the accuracy of production knowledge of language from page 23 of the California ELD standards publication. At the early stage of the expanding level, EL students are able to be comprehensible when using simple and some expanded sentences and discourse or texts. And they're able to produce English, but may exhibit fairly frequent errors in pronunciation, grammar, and writing conventions that may sometimes impede meaning. And upon exit from the expanding level, EL students are able to be comprehensible when using expanded sentences, discourse, or texts. And they are also able to produce English, but may exhibit fairly frequent errors in pronunciation, grammar, and writing conventions, but they usually do not impede meaning. And then the image on this slide shows the bridging level in the accuracy of production knowledge of language from page 24 of the California ELD standards publication. So at the early stage of the bridging level, EL students are able to be comprehensible when using a variety of grade level expanded discourse or texts. They are also able to produce English, but may exhibit some errors in pronunciation, grammar, and writing conventions that usually do not impede meaning. Upon exit from the bridging level, EL students are able to be comprehensible when using a variety of grade level expanded discourse or texts on a variety of topics. They are also able to produce English, but may exhibit some minor errors in pronunciation, grammar, and writing conventions that do not impede meaning. And now we're going to pause and reflect on the PLDs from the accuracy of production knowledge of language at the exit stage of the emerging level and the early stages of the expanding level. So the task is to analyze the relationship of the descriptors from one level to the next and to identify ELD instructional practices and supports needed to enhance EL students' knowledge of English from one level to the next along the PLD continuum. So we'll post in the, to the chat, there it is, uh, the pause and reflect instructions, and then we'll move to the next slide that contains the PLDs you will reflect on. So um, we're going to go ahead and let's move to the next slide.
Okay, so um, please consider the instructional practices and supports needed to enhance a student's proficiency from exiting the emerging level to early stages of the expanding level. So upon exit from the emerging level, EL students are able to be comprehensible when using simple or learned phrases and sentences. They are also able to produce English, but they may exhibit frequent errors in pronunciation, grammar, and writing conventions that sometimes impede meaning. At the early stage of the expanding level, EL students are able to be comprehensible when using simple and some expanded sentences and discourse or texts. They are also able to produce English, but may exhibit fairly frequent errors in pronunciation, grammar, and writing conventions that may sometimes impede meaning. So please reflect on the PLDs, analyze the relationship of the descriptors, and identify ELD instructional practices and supports needed to enhance EL students' knowledge of English from one level to the next. And please provide your responses on the Padlet. You'll have four minutes. We'll pause the recording while you reflect and we'll resume the recording when we all return. So please everyone come back at 4.47 uh, p.m. Thank you. I wanna uplift a couple of the comments I see in Padlet, which are so important. So I wanna just pick out this phrase. The key here is student production of language. What I really appreciate appreciate about that is it's not about students filling in worksheets necessarily for the sake of the worksheet. The focus is on producing. They're engaging in meaningful um, communicative um, scenarios. And, and then someone else here mentioned um, opportunities for English learners to practice writing in multiple contexts. So it's not just, it's, it's not just um, filling in blanks for the sake of the blank, but how am I to be comprehensible? I'm trying to comp for someone else to comprehend my meaning and that accuracy of production is going to help me achieve that goal. I also want to highlight, um, these are, this is great. Look at this. Students also need to interact with sentence patterning. What is the pattern of the sentence that you see? So that they really are being knowledge of how the language works. Um, text reconstruction, Google voice typing to transfer oral language into written language to improve writing conventions. Um, that's really powerful. And then finding out what students are interested in. So they want to continue to converse. Really highlighting, again, in accuracy, not for the sake of accuracy, but so that they can be comprehensible in meaningful interactions with others. Um, and again, so many great um, comments in the chat. And I, I just want to appreciate everybody's engagement there. Um, but I see the time is that we have to bring it to a close. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share that. Let me go ahead and bring myself to the questions. Um, we're going to answer some questions that you've posted in the Q&A. I have not kept my um, eye on the Q&A. So I'll go ahead and Gustavo, I invite you to um, respond to anything that you've been seeing. Thank you, Christine. Uh, we've been responding to questions along the way, and there there are no questions in the Q&A at this time. So if anyone does have any questions, go ahead and post in the Q&A uh, feature. And you can still do that. And also, if you have a question at a later time, you may submit those questions by email at LPLO dot at LPLO at CDE dot CA dot GOV. That's LPLO at CDE dot CA dot GOV. So this concludes the presentation portion of today's webinar session. And I'll pass it back to Christine. Thank you. Thank you, Gustavo. So before you leave, please, we would love um, to share the link to the feedback survey for this webinar. Your feedback to, on today's webinar is very important and it truly will help us continuously improve our practice and ensure future webinars in the series meet your needs. So a link to the survey will be provided in the chat. And again,
truly, we, um, we really appreciate the feedback. So please do take a moment to offer your, your thoughts and insights. And now I'll turn it over to Gustavo for the final closing. Thank you, Christine. So please join us at our future ELD Standards webinar. The next webinar is the uh, for the ELD Standards Part 1, Interacting in Meaningful Ways, where we will cover Part 1 of the ELD Standards in Chapter 3. And we will that will take place on Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. The link is in the Padlet in the in the column to the most right. And we also posted it in the chat. And the fifth webinar of the series titled California ELD Standards Part 2, Learning About How English Works, will take place on Wednesday, May 22nd. And we will post in the chat. Again, the registration link to the webinars, and also those links are in the Padlet. And remember that all webinars in this series begin at 3.30 p.m. We would also like to thank my colleagues Lori Kelling and Emily Ingram for their help in executing today's webinar. And on behalf of my co-presenter, Christine, and the administrators and staff from the Multilingual Support Division and the Region 15 Comprehensive Center at West Ed. We thank you all for joining us today and see you next time. Thank you.